All right, in this lesson right here, what we're going to do is take a look at how we would go about setting up our model or models inside of 3ds Max for export over to Motion Builder for facial animation. Now, for those of you that watched the last lesson, we showed you how to go about doing this with Maya by using the blend shape. Now, inside of 3ds Max, we have what is called the Morpher modifier. And what Zach's going to do, just in case there happens to be some of you out there that did not watch the last lesson because, well, you may not have Maya or you may not use Maya, Zach's going to show you how to go about using the Morpher modifier inside of 3ds Max with a simple sphere first, and then we will graduate with the heads. Okay. So let me start off, and I'm going to create a sphere in the top view. And there's the sphere. There we go. And let me go back to the front view for our example. Kind of move things out of the way here. I'm going to go ahead and convert this over to an editable poly so I can make some changes to it. And then I'll clone one off, and then we'll say we'll clone two more off. So now we've got three shapes that we can make changes to, and we'll actually be morphing all of them into this original shape. So let me go ahead and go to vertex sub-object mode. And I'll select the first bend of vertices. In fact, for this, I'll just go ahead and use soft selection. Let me bring my fall off down a little bit. And we'll scale these in. Jump over here to my next shape. And this time, let's say we'll take a row across the bottom. Once again, we'll use soft selection. Scale these up. Actually, I need to move my fall off back down. Let's go ahead and readjust my fall off. That's much nicer. There we go. And then I'm going to come over here, and this time I guess we'll take a row along the top. And well, this time we will adjust our fall off first thing. And there we are. So now we have three very different shapes that we can blend in between with our original shape. But to do this, we're going to need to use the Morpher modifier. So let me go ahead and apply that to this shape. If you want, you can scroll down and find it, or if you've got it memorized, you can hit M nine times, and that'll take you right to it. <laughs> and if you do this enough, you will get it memorized. And so here we have all of these empty channels that we can apply morph targets to. And there's a couple of different ways that we can actually attach these shapes into these channels. We can right click and select pick from scene and actually click on each one and that actually loaded sphere 02 into that channel. Or if we want to, down here on the bottom we have load multiple targets which will actually check the topology of all objects in your scene and everything eligible for a morph target to this shape will be listed right here. So we'll go ahead and add the rest of these click load and now if we scroll back up and take a look at our channels we can adjust these spinners and actually create different shapes by blending in between them that's very cool now if let's say we're just kinda of playing around we come up with something really interesting I don't know maybe we're pinching in like this and we really like this shape and we want to keep it we can come in here and make a clone now the interesting thing we have here is that both of these objects now have the morpher modifier applied so what we need to do is take the one that we just cloned off we'll right click and collapse our stack and when we get our little warning we'll just say yes to it so now this is just a shape unto itself now we'll go back to our original shape right click on an empty channel pick from scene and add that so now we actually have a morph target here let's zero out these spinners that we can morph directly to to add that new shape in. So the cool thing about this is you could start out with a head and duplicate that head into maybe four or five different uh, targets, modify those, bring them into a morpher, and then use those to start constructing even more targets and then easily add those in as well. Exactly. So with that done, let's go ahead and set up the morph targets for our head. I'll go ahead and delete all of these shapes out. And here's Joe's head. So the first thing we're going to do is apply a Morpher modifier to the head itself. And that was pretty easy. So now if we want, we can just click Load Multiple Targets and just click All. Because yeah, since, again, it's checking the topology for you, making sure that this is all of the geometry that has the same number of vertices. Go ahead. Exactly. But uh, we're not going to be able to adjust the order in which they're selected like this. They're always going to pop in alphabetically. So if you want to go one at a time so they're listed in a specific order, you can. But due to time constraints, we're going to go ahead and send them off like this. And for those that are interested in why we'd want to go about selecting them in a possible specific order, take a look at the last lesson. Ah, exactly. I'm making you watch it after all. <laughs> anyway, we'll go ahead and load these up. And so now here we are. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this face so we can see some changes. We've got the mouth open channel, and as you can see, that clearly does open and close his mouth. 
So now we also have some blend shapes that we want to set up. Oh, blend shapes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Morph targets. Yeah, we just finished the last lesson. Yes, yes. And we want to go ahead and set those up for the teeth. So I'll go ahead and select the teeth. And we'll add a morpher modifier to those as well. And we can go ahead and just click load multiple targets. And only the eligible topology shapes show up. So that's our the two teeth blends that we made. Or morphs, whatever. And with those out of the way, we can also select the tongue, which you can just make out back there in the back of the mouth and do the same thing. Load multiple targets. Really, we only have one target, but this way we don't have to go hunting for it. We get our nice selection list and click load, and we're all set. All of our targets are now in place for all of our shapes. The cool thing about Max is that now that we have these in, before we export, we have the power to go ahead and delete all of these out. So we don't have to worry about them. As a matter of fact, if we don't delete them out, when we import into Motion Builder, all of those shapes will still be in our scene. Right. If you'll remember in the last lesson, those from Maya, you'll have to keep all of your targets. So there's exactly. a big difference here. Exactly. But here inside of uh, Motion... Oh, sorry, Motion Builder. Inside <laughs> of Max, all of that data is kept inside of your modifier. So now we can keep things right there, and all of the targets are kept in place. So now it's time to export. So we'll go down to File, Export. And we'll switch over to the mighty, mighty FBX format. And we'll change this over to, we'll say, Joe's Heads Max. And click Save. And we get our little window up. And we want to be able to send the geometries. We don't need to worry about cameras or lights. Geometries uses bones. We don't have to worry about. But we do want to send a shape, which, as you notice, in, in parentheses, is the morph modifier. And we don't need to send any animation. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And this is now ready to open up inside a Motion Builder. Okay. That's pretty much everything we wanted to take a look at in this lesson. Exactly. All right. So that's going to wrap it up. Thanks, everyone.